So earlier this year, we uh, put together just a real quick, like 20 to 30 minute uh, demo of some of the tools that we've been using in CryEngine. And it was, uh, it's been a really good relationship with the uh, Cry folks. And part of the reason why they uh, asked us to put together the demo and, and, uh, and then we demoed it at GDC um, is because it's, a, it's kind of a mixture of their stuff. They've given us an amazing foundation and then um, a bit of work of our own to, um, to deliver behaviors that work better for, for our role-playing game as opposed to their shooter. So what we're going to look at tonight is a couple of systems. Like I said, it's a, it's a combo of things. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is uh, generating a navigation mesh and uh, the system, and it's completely cries. It's called M&M, uh, and uh, it? multi-layer navigation mesh, right? Thanks. Um, and the uh, reason this is awesome is because for you know 16 years of doing levels, I've placed a whole lot of points to make somebody walk where I want. Um, with this, that kind of goes away. Um, you basically just draw a shape, give it a depth, and uh, within that volume, the uh, area will be evaluated, and then it generates a uh, generates a mesh. And the vertices within the mesh are basically all the points at which your AI makes its decisions. So, pathing and getting people to go where you want them to go used to be a very tedious, time-consuming path. Like when doing some of the uh, uh, Bolivian plane stuff, drop-in points would take a day um, to do a, uh, you know, let's call it a, a quarter kilometer square area. Um, so you can see here, Jim put together something that's, let's call it a 100 by 100 meters or so. Um, uh, did it in uh, minutes. This allows us to very, very quickly get to a point where, uh, well, where you're actually fighting in the space or getting your AI-driven folks to, uh, to move around and, and uh, gives you an opportunity to sort of evaluate how you want them to work with your, within your engine or within your uh, project. So all that blue is what we call the blue carpet at the studio. We have uh, really, in a lot of ways, built our pipeline around that blue carpet. The uh, level design team uh, uses pretty traditional methods for blocking out a region, um, you know, lots of simple gray shapes. And it allows them to um, go ahead and very quickly put in a navigation mesh and start building encounters and start building fights. And we know that it's all going to change after the environment crew has kind of come through and uh, made the world, you know, beautiful and really come alive. But it's not a lot of lost work on the uh, level designer side because as you can see, it only took a few seconds. We can set it up. The counter space works pretty good. We hand it off to Enviro. They make it look amazing. The environment, the uh, navigation mesh then changes pretty dramatically. That's cool. All we have to do is kind of come in and we can delete it, place a new one, um, or just start uh, sort of tightening up this mesh to uh, account for all the changes that came through with the, with the uh, pass from the environment artist. Um, with that blue carpet, we can also kind of say, we can, we, we can create boundaries. We can say, all right, so um, right through the center here, we have a very specific uh, uh, path that we need the uh, NPCs and the player to be able to take advantage of. And um, everything outside of that blue carpet space is, is there to be beautiful. So go crazy, you can do whatever you want, just as long as you don't mess with our path through the center. Just recently, we've been collaborating with uh, Cry, and, or well, actually, I guess with a couple of different folks. Matthew Jack, um, a uh, uh, amazing CryEngine resource on uh, the uh, Napseed stuff. Do we want to go ahead and drop in a Napseed? So we can clean up these meshes really, really easily by um, dropping in what we call a Napseed, and it's really just a little more than. A uh, note that says, hey, it's a big mesh in the middle. This is the only one that I really want evaluated. So, um, the long story short, there is you can see how broken up this mesh is. That's not a concern. We can uh, specify the contiguous path through the space, you know, the, the one long section that is most critical to, uh, to our gameplay, and, uh, and then place that seed, and then uh, it'll flag the path in the middle is blue, and then Everything else is red, and and the uh, AI knows. Oh, okay. All I care about is the center area, so that allows us to uh, to 
uh, be a little bit looser with the navigation areas that we're uh, putting together. Um, and it also kind of has a cost benefit to it as well. We're not creating as many regions trying to create this really, really specific mesh. Instead, we're just dropping a huge volume, having that built, and then saying, this path in the center is all we really need. So, uh, so, in a very short amount of time, we can get something that our AI can start working with. I want to move on to our combat grotto. All right. So that area is just a nice demo space because it's kind of cool looking and it's, you can see how uh, intricate the path gets. We're going to fly over here to another space. It's just all um, woods, a little bit gentler um, and uh, a little bit easier to set up a, a combat scenario. So in here, we're starting to look at um, prize tools as well as some of our own. and. When we were at GDC, we really were kind of hammering on, hey, iteration speed, iteration speed. That was that was the big deal uh, here, because building a combat encounter in a lot of engines is it, it can take uh, it can take a fair amount of time getting your NPCs in there, getting them hooked up, spawn scripted, uh, patrolling, yada yada yada, before you can actually get some kind of feedback and figure out if your space and your NPCs are actually going to cooperate with one another. Um, with some of the uh, work that we've been doing with Cry here, we have a basic system of uh, dropping in an entity that's the uh, encounter manager that controls everything that's going to get spawned into the fight. And let's see, I'm just talking, I'm not actually, I don't know where Jim's at. Are you at the encounter manager part? All right, cool. We're on track. All right, so the encounter manager is dad. And then from there, he's got a bunch of wave managers looking after the kids. And then the kids are, are uh, gonna be the next step. And that's where we actually start spawning in uh, NPCs. Again, the nice thing is since the, uh, that uh, mesh is nothing but a big circle around this grotto, hit generate. Uh, generation usually takes, um, this is a pretty decent sized map, probably uh, roughly uh, half a kilometer in width and then uh, meandering a kilometer and a half um, through the through the space, and it takes it a, to do the whole thing probably four or five minutes, um, or early, maybe not that three three minutes to generate nav for everything, um, which is huge. Uh, that means that any LD at any point in time working on a location is generating generating the uh, mesh for a couple of arenas uh, in seconds. All right. So now we got our wave manager here hooked up. So the encounter, like I said, is dad, and then he's connected to our wave manager, and we have multiples of those, and all they do is just say, hey, who's first? How far into killing people in the first wave do we start spawning the second? And then, you know, how far into the third wave, fourth wave, so on and so forth. From the wave manager, we've got our, uh, who we want to spawn here. And without the, uh, the spawner over there to the left, this person would just drop right into the uh, into the space where she's dropped there. Our spawn door, though, allows us to say, from this location, you're going to you know be spawned into space, and you're going to include whatever animations we need. So, at this point, within what has been probably five six minutes we're able to start fighting stuff in you know hardened up space with complicated collision there we go awesome Ooh. now best part about all of this is when we build an encounter we know that the first time you built an encounter it's not going to be good um, getting an encounter good takes uh, cycle after cycle it takes play tests and lots of uh, rework so this entire system is built around just being able to really, really quickly uh, evaluate, change, evaluate, change everything uh, that we have in. So fighting against one person really doesn't feel particularly powerful. So we'll go ahead and start adding in some more folks. Here we go. Okay, Hunter. So he's going to give her a little bit more uh, support. Uh, melee, close range. Um, and uh, hit points, so he'll, he'll do some tanking for her. Oh, and a root pressure. So, 
more tanky goodness. So with this setup, it allows us to have a lot of different tools to get um, increasingly uh, smarter looking uh, behaviors out of folks from subdividing that navigation mesh so that there's more points for them to uh, make decisions from, as well as just having different uh, encounter groups because all of the AI act on another in position and then what they choose as their uh, attack. And it looks like we're loading or compiling a shade or something. Or did you just kill out of it? Oh, okay. Good, good, good. That's better than <laughs> crashing. <laughs> awesome. So, um, with that said, to uh, continue making them smarter, we've also got. You want to do some cover points? Awesome. All right. So uh, this is a tool, uh, the uh, encounter manager, wave manager, all of that stuff is, is uh, a lot of work on our side. Um, and then what we're going to bounce back to here is uh, an amazing system of cries, the, uh, the uh, cover point system. And what you're looking at here is uh, literally it's just a, a, an arrow that you point at the surface that needs to be evaluated and then you give it the values necessary to give it a large enough volume so that you can actually see the uh, cover surface drawn on the uh, on whatever you want your NPC to hide behind. We've written a lot of very specific behaviors for a lot of our NPCs, a lot of our our, our uh, you know guys out to kill you are cowards. They like to hide and summon things and throw things at you. So uh, cover is really really important to us. And the fact that we can drop in and cover that quickly and add hundreds of cover points to any particular area in a hurry makes our guys look a lot smarter really fast. Let's get it. Do this like Swarm aside in there. Cool. Oh, good. Feel free to ask questions. This is informal. It's Atlanta. We're all friends. <laughs> All these tools in the base cry engine, or they customized them for you? You made a few. The nav, uh, the nav mesh generation is in. Uh, if you go grab three five off of my cry engine right now, you'll have it. Same thing with the uh, cover points. The uh, encounter system. They have a different encounter system. You can use tools that that um, are similar, but uh, encounter manager, wave manager, that's the that's our stuff. He's too scared. see them starting to flee and look for locations to hide from you because you can shoot fire out of your hands. It also uh, allows these guys to set up more complex uh, uh, attack patterns. So you'll have a heavy, big and stupid run barreling past cover points straight towards you, grabbing your attention, while uh, two of our uh, lighterweight guys go ahead and flank you and to uh, Hopefully, you get pot shots while you're occupied with the big guy. But um, AOE's defeat cover. Happy about that. Something that um, as soon as Jim pops out, there's actually a really cool key piece to this that we accidentally skipped over because we were so excited about getting the fighting. Um, let's move some of that geometry around. So uh, when we first got this built at the studio, this was the part that made uh, Dan Brown and his Enviro crew all go, "Oh my God!" And that was the fact that we would build a nav mesh. And uh, hand off a, a you know gray map with a big blue carpet in it, and the concern was, oh my God, but we're going to wreck your nav if when we start arting it up. Well, actually, it is regenerating. It's all good. <laughs> so um, that is the 
that is what allows us to build uh, big maps with a team of approximately uh, 12 guys in a big, big hurry. So, again, all in an effort to get good encounters. Yes? The question was, the blue carpet is uh, being calculated by CRY and it's uh, controlling where the NPCs can go. The answer is yes. The NPCs are using that blue nav data, that mesh, to figure out, to make all of their uh, decisions. We deliver all the rules for them to make the decisions by. The blue mesh just says these are all valid. When you're, when you're putting down, um, when you're putting down more uh, enemies and NPCs to spawn, do you have to tag each of them to the wave manager and all the other managers individually every single time? Just hit target, hit target each time you want to put something in. There's a yes and a no to that. So um, I can take one of the one piece of data and use it multiple times so you don't put it out once for an area. Yep. Yes, yes. And uh, that system allows our LDs to really just do a lot of visual organization going from arena to arena. So you can bring your five guys that you want to fight with into the arena, drop them in so you're looking at them and go, I want you spawned, I want you spawned, I'm not going to worry about you, I want you spawned for wave uh, one, two, and three. And uh, uh, when I'm putting together stuff, I will duplicate some uh, uh, guys so that um, I have some, like, I want these two same guys, uh, but I want one forward and one back, and it's just sort of easier for me to duplicate them, hook them up and go, you're the forward guy, you're the back guy. But there's, it's loose enough that I don't necessarily have to do that. I just, it's, it communicates when another PRLD opens it up and looks at it, he's like, I see what Tim's getting after here. Um, the question of, uh, well, the system, like, you were just placing cover points that the AI could use whenever the nearby, uh, does that force them they, like, if you place a number of different cover points, will they just start running between each of them, or is that something to handle on a different level, like uh, they're not compelled. It's like, all right, well, I'm going to go here predictably, and I'm going to go there predictably, and you see a pattern form. I, I think Jim needs to answer this because this is his team's full time job. The uh, the cover points are actually used uh, for queries that we make with the TPS system, which is the tactical point system. So behaviorally. An enemy might decide that he wants to take cover, he's come under fire from the player. So he'll query the system, the system will look for points for him to use, and we'll say find points behind cover. He'll get back a list of points based on our criteria, and he can go and use the nearest one. But they're not actually driving any behavior. They're just information. You can think of them as level annotations. It tries to give them a little more knowledge about the space that they're in, and then we can build the behaviors to use that knowledge. That answers your question. <laughs>